Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Saturday mountain weather update. And as expected, it's real good up there in Revelstoke, Interior, BC. Heavy snow continues today, in fact, across a lot of Interior, BC. Even the coastal range should get heavy snow. But look at that pot of snow covering the gnome up there on the cam. Uh, they're reporting about a foot of snow. And, and again, there's more accumulation on the way as well. So we're not quite done, but outstanding conditions up there today and likely tomorrow across Revelstoke. Here's radar out of the Pacific Northwest. You can see it. This is our next storm system, obviously, and rain and snow. Snow for parts of the high cascades, the volcanoes, snow running through the uh, the coastal range of BC, and then overrunning into uh, parts of interior BC over Revelstoke and Red Mountain and Fernie and all those places, kicking horse. So that storm system will eventually send a cold front down through the interior on late 8, 9, into early 10. Now, it still looks minor to me, but at least it's going to help to break down this ridge of high pressure that's sitting across most of the Intermountain West. Up in the northeast, you've got another clipper coming. Look at that, coming, that snow coming out of Sault Ste. Marie and Saginaw, and eventually that's going to be moving in here uh, with light to moderate snow accumulations across the northeast, so that's coming. Um, let me give you the lay of the land. So here's water vapor satellite imagery, and on this, your oranges and reds are your drier air aloft. The key is going to be in the whites and the blues. So you've got a definite storm system here. You've got another good spiral behind it, so two areas of low pressure. And you've got a nice feed of moisture with both of these storm systems, both of them supported by the jet. So eventually what happens is... This first storm system sends that cold front down into the interior, and then this storm system will come in behind it. And actually, the pattern does turn, turn quite a bit more active by the time we get into mid-December. Wait till you see that. In fact, let me show you this. So integrated vapor transport. Look at this as a clue to kind of identify when we might see atmospheric river contribution. Well, look down the road. Things start to turn just a little more active, 12 12 through about 1217. And at times, it's possible some of the members here on this model indicate a weak atmospheric river contribution. It's possible. That would certainly juice up storm systems down the road. And this is valid for that San Francisco Bay corridor all the way up into the, into the Tahoe area, the, the Sierra. So this could produce some generous snowfall down the road. And indeed, it's in my forecast. Okay, here is the uh, the snow timeline as I see it. Best odds of snow, Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, Interior, BC, and the Northeast. And finally now, I have several days where I think we're going to see snow for most places. So the Wasatch, you've got light on 12.9, and I mean very light. Wait till you see my forecast <clears throat> for that coming up. Light to moderate on 12.12, and then heavy snow accumulation, 12.14 and 12.15. Colorado, light on 12.9 light on 1212 and then potentially heavy on 1214 and 15 so very similar to the wasatch with this storm track for both the wasatch and then rolling down into colorado the tetons could see quite a bit of snow as well um, tahoe i've got two dates on there for snow but the heaviest shot for tahoe <clears throat> is going to be on 1214 and a little bit of an atmospheric river contribution not out of the question and the northeast, I've got three to four chances of snow. Your heaviest shot is going to come in on 12-11. Uh, but you can see we've got clippers lined up, 12-7, 12-8, and 12-9. Quick movers. Okay, here is the, uh, the forecast mediagram. This is for Alta ski area at about 9,000 feet. And representative of uh, snow, Snowbird and and for the most part, a lot of Little and Big Cottonwood Canyon combined here. But this is at about 9,000 feet. And notice the snowfall forecast. There's not a lot of forecast here. I mean, it's all under an inch. That's how minor and fast-moving and moisture-starved this front is. And it comes in uh, late on the 8th and early into the 9th. So again, maybe up to an inch. But I mean, right here, what I'm seeing is well under an inch for the Wasatch. Winds increase tomorrow, Sunday the 8th, up to 30, 40 miles per hour. Temperature highs today at about 36, 27 tomorrow, so colder at 9,000 at Alta tomorrow. And then only in the teens on Monday during that light snowfall that moves through. So it is going to turn colder. 
with this cold front that eventually rolls through. All right, let me talk about the jet stream. <clears throat> so here we go. By uh, close of business today, you can already see the little bit of uh, the dip in the jet coming into the Pacific Northwest. Watch what happens. It translates down, digs down to the south, brings in colder air, starts to spark and generate a little bit of snowfall um, across Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, parts of Utah, and eventually Colorado into 12.9 right there. There's your base of the trough. And then that moves through, but that's not it. Look at the jet stream setting up from west to east. We've seen this before, escorting in storm systems. There's at least two right there. And there's 1216 with another one coming into California and the West Coast. So things definitely turning more active as we head towards mid-December. Um, putting some precip, rain and snow on top of all this. So here we are by 530 this afternoon. There's your storm system up in the Pacific Northwest with rain and snow. Um, so by Sunday morning, it pushes snow with a cold front down into the Tetons, Big Sky, Yellowstone, Idaho, Montana, and then eventually right there, it <laughs> there's not much, but it will run through uh, parts of Utah, and then eventually it drops down into Colorado right there. There's 12.9 in the afternoon. So it's, it's late 12.8, early 12.9 for the Wasatch if you get much of anything. And then it drops down into Colorado through 12.9 and probably clips northern New Mexico as well. And then that's out of here. Then the whole storm track starts to shift to the south, comes in from the west, feeds the east. And then watch, there's one storm system that rolls through. But here's a bigger one. Look at that hitting the Sierra. Look at that through Nevada, Idaho. Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and then it fills in over the top of Colorado with some nice snowfall. And there's another storm behind that. Look at that for 1216, guys. Okay, let's look at snowfall. So <clears throat> my latest numbers look like this. So across the West, this runs 127. So all of today through 129. This mainly covers this first cold front. And you can see the numbers. They're very light through Colorado anywhere from potentially one to two across the I-70 corridor north, maybe a little bit more in the southern part of Colorado with potentially two, three, four, five, six inches down there. Um, a couple of inches for northern uh, New Mexico, uh, potentially five to eight up through Big Sky, Grand Targhee and Jackson Hole, and a few inches up there in the parts of Idaho, northwest Montana, and, and a bit more up there in the parts of interior BC in the Pacific Northwest. Now, we are in the money right here. This is 1210 through 1216. There's at least two storm systems here. And all that extra moisture that comes in like a conveyor belt off the Pacific. So we're really juicing up the snowfall rates here in this second, uh, the second period, 1210 through 1216, potentially two or three feet of accumulation through the, uh, the Sierra from Shasta to Tahoe down to Mammoth, potentially up to two feet, one to two feet for the Wasatch. Um, and also the Tetons in Colorado, uh, 4 to 12 inches potentially on the way, especially for the western slope. Um, some decent numbers through Montana, 5 to 8 in, in, in Idaho, uh, 1 to 2 feet for the Pacific Northwest, and some good numbers up through Revelstoke for this period, uh, potentially 10. Red Mountain, about 8, maybe 8 for Fernie. So we're looking really good, 1210 to 1216, assuming we bring in two storm systems during this time frame. Okay, so for the Northeast, this is all of today through 1216. Keep in mind, we've got three clippers, two or three clippers, and then a main storm system at the end of the period. So the snow doesn't all come at one time, but potentially 8 to 12 inches of accumulation. For New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, I mean, all the resorts are right there at 8 to 12 inches. So this could be, this is going to be a good period. So essentially what's happening is all of the weather is coming off the Pacific right now and moving up into BC. And then it's running down into the Great Lakes and pushing these fast-moving clippers through the northeast. So that's the pattern we're seeing now. And that's why we've got some of this snow here. All right, guys. Well, we're going to end on the money map here. This is 1210 through 1216. Again, big totals possible. It's very good to see these returning to the forecast after a very dry seven-day stretch for a lot of the lower 48. Keep your fingers crossed, guys. Thanks for tuning in here. I appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.